three minutes. Securing LO2 topping. Atlas tanks to flight pressure. 250. FTS internal. T-minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The countdown is on track as we proceed toward T-0. Once the rocket lifts off, it will take approximately 81 seconds to reach Mach 1 or the speed of sound. Two minutes. Vehicle internal. 155. Launch sequence is start. 150. Securing Centaur LH2. Securing Centaur LH2. 140. FCS launch enable. FTS armed. T minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. The launch vehicle, payload, ground systems, and eastern range are go for launch. Focus on. FCS count started. One ten. Then fell flopped. T minus one minute and counting. Green. 54. 40. Stable at step three. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Sivers. 20. Fifteen. T minus ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. We have ignition. Two. One. Zero. We have liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the second space-based infrared systems mission for the United States Air Force. RD-180 pump speeds are within parameters. Vitriol roll program has begun. Vehicle body rates look good. You are hearing the voice of Marty Malinowski providing launch vehicle ascent data. Let's listen in for mission progress. RD-180 continues to operate well. Pump speeds are good. Injector pressures are within parameters. RD-180 continues to perform well. As PU has gone close with control, minor mixed ratio Request has been made. The roll program has been completed. Vehicle body rates look good. Range track shows the vehicle right down the middle of the corridor. Mach 1. Body rates continue to look very good. Bus and battery voltages are stable. Max Q, body rates continue to look very good. RD-180 performance looks good as it throttles down right on schedule. Current altitude is 10 miles. Downrange distance is 6 miles. Current velocity is 2,037 miles per hour.
booster engines continuing to perform well as we accelerate at 2.1 Gs. Coming up on our Q Alpha Limited steering enable. And steering has been enabled and a minor roll bias uh, change in attitude has been accomplished. Signatures look good. Booster engine performance continues to be nominal. The RCS pyro valve has been fired. That system is now pressurizing the flight levels. Signatures look good. Currently accelerating at 3.1 Gs. And the booster is making a roll change for thermal conditioning reasons, and that roll has been completed. Booster continues to perform well. Current altitude is 42 miles, downrange distance 89 miles. Current velocity is 6,909 miles per hour. Coming up on the 5G throttle segment, currently accelerating at 4.8 Gs. And boost phase cooldown has begun. The Pogo Pyro vent has been fired, currently accelerating at 5 Gs. And throttle back to 4.6 Gs in preparation for BICO. Boost phase chill down is complete. And we have BICO. Engine shutdown looks good. We have retros and stage separation. We have fuel and locks pre start. The GN2 purge firing and the RCS is underway. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. Looking for the payload for jettison momentarily. And we have indication of jettison and video confirms we have a good separation. This is Atlas Mission Center. Control at T plus 4 minutes 41 seconds. Marty Malinowski just confirmed payload fairing jettison and all systems continue to operate nominally. The mission is in the first of two Centaur engine burns. Our next event, Centaur main engine cutoff, will occur in about 10 minutes. As the name implies, Sibir's GO2 will be inserted into a geosynchronous orbit. Sibir's GO2 is identical to GO1, which was launched on United Launch Alliance Atlas V in May 2011. The space-based infrared system consolidates operational military and technical intelligence requirements into a single space program, resulting in unprecedented global persistent infrared surveillance capabilities. The following video provides a brief overview of this critical capability. Global Persistent Infrared Surveillance continues to be a critical national security space mission. The Cold War focus on strategic ICBM systems has expanded to include short and mid-range ballistic missile threats. The Defense Support Program maintains the legacy Cold War monitoring to warn of ICBM missile launches against the U.S. The replacement program is the Space-Based Infrared System, or SIBRS, which has already provided two infrared sensor payloads in highly elliptical orbits, or HEO. The SIBRS program is also deploying multiple spacecraft into Geosynchronous Earth Orbit, or GEO. Each has two independent infrared sensors. One is a scanner dedicated to missile warning with full Earth monitoring. The other sensor is a taskable starer that can focus on selected regions. Each pair of sensors acts simultaneously and independently of each other, providing a robust, taskable infrared platform. Sibirs is the nation's next generation of space-based infrared surveillance. The program has already proven its value with successful HEO payloads on orbit. With deployment of the GEO spacecraft, Sibirs will be an unprecedented resource as the nation's global, taskable, and persistent infrared monitoring sentinel. are good.